So today's talk is going to be a little bit more different than what you expect from a regular talk, uh, meaning that it's going to be interactive, meaning that it's going to be way more complex. And by complex, I mean that it's going to be almost impossible to comprehend. So don't worry, in order to help you understand what it's going to be about, I've spent countless hours using the latest technology in coding to create a visual simulation of today's talk. So, by the power of Microsoft PowerPoint, I present you the visual simulation. So, this on, on stage, yeah, very impressive, I know. So, this on stage is me, and you, it's you down there, and I'm going to be saying things, statements, whatever, stating my opinion, and if you agree with me, you're going to raise your hand. Now, I have a visual glitch here where your arm grows out of your eyeball, but don't worry, that won't happen in real life. Um, so I'm going to be using this to demonstrate a specific point. And don't worry, your opinions won't be used against, or I won't be judging your opinions, you know. If you agree with me, I won't judge you. If you disagree with me, a shark is going to eat you nothing more. Um, uh, for those, now, I forgot to explain. For those that don't understand what sarcasm is, there's not, uh, the shark isn't real, that was just a joke. There's not, uh, nobody's gonna eat you. There's not gonna be any shark. There's going to be a crocodile. Next. So now that we've all warmed up and people are actually play, paying attention, um, I wanna ask Sarah a question. Uh, who likes hanging out with their friends? Please raise your hand. All right, that's practically everybody in the, all right. Next question, who likes playing games with their friends? You know, you go outside, play some football or cards or whatever, video games, doesn't matter. All right, that's still a lot. Next, we're more specifically, who likes playing board games with their friends or even alone? Still a lot. Who likes playing cards? Please raise your hand. All right, that's, yeah, that's a lot of people. Who likes playing chess, by the way? Yeah, hi. You, yeah, nice. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the problem. Uh, as you can see here, there's not a lot of people that like playing chess. And actually, our school is the better case here, because our school promotes playing chess. We have uh, chess desk or ch chess sets at uh, NYP sector, and we have a chess club. Yet still, chess is this unpopular, even in this base case scenario. So I thought about it. What could be the reason for this? And I've actually come up with a hypothesis. So we're going to test it now. Who thinks that a game of chess looks a little bit like this? Where it's just people with massive brains, three Nobel Prizes at minimum, on average, just playing it out six, six hours, uh, calculating every single possible move. Basically what I'm saying, who thinks chess is for nerds? Please raise your hand. Huh? All right, well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the stereotype that I've been, uh, that uh, is widely spread not only amongst us, but specifically amongst this generation. And I'm here to prove that that's wrong, that chess can be just as fun as any other game. But in order to do so, we need to define what we mean under chess is for nerds. So we're going to come up with these points together, which I have already prepared beforehand. So first point. Uh, chess is hard to play. Who agrees with that? I mean, you know, you sit down and there's a lot of, you know, like you think, calculate 20 moves ahead, pretty difficult, right? So we agree, all agree on that point. Next, chess takes too long to play. Have you ever seen grandmasters play? Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen grandmasters play where they sit for six hours straight without any break? Pretty tired. And finally, uh, chess is way too repetitive because you know you have one board, same pieces, same rules, it, just gets way too repetitive and you get bored easily. I think this is the most common things that people dislike about chess. So now, uh, I'm gonna challenge you in a game of chess, we can say metaphorically like Sherlock Holmes did against Moriarty in that one movie, Sherlock Holmes Game of, game of Shadows. And um, let's begin with uh, the statement, chess is hard to play. There are six pieces, right? Six different pieces. Each piece moves in a different way there is check, checkmate, the end. Very difficult, right? I mean, that's eight whole rules that you need to memorize. Impossible. So, as you can see here, chess, the rules of chess are pretty simple. What makes chess difficult is the strategy you implement. And of course, I don't know why, but after people giving it the first try and then they you know, they usually give up, even though in every single other game, this is how it works. The more experience you gain from a game, uh, you gain from a game, the more uh, developed your strategy in that game becomes. And in chess is just a little bit more prioritized in other, than in other games. 
So on to the next statement. Chess takes too long to play. For those that uh, think so, please raise your hand. What do you think this is? Or do you know what this is? Yeah? And do you know that it can be used in chess? Yeah? Well, I mean, then why do you think that, ch that chess takes too long to play? Because everybody knows that chess timers can define the length of chess. Uh, meaning, you have these two buttons over here, and during your turn, your timer runs down. And when you finish your turn, you hit that button, and it switches to the other player's turn. And if your time runs out, the game is over, you lose. Meaning that you can set the timer uh, to any time you want, and you can make the game last, as long as you want. If you want to play for a half an hour, you can play for a half an hour. If you want to play for 10 minutes, you can make it last 10 minutes. Heck, if you want to play for just under a minute, you can do it. I have actually example of a game of chess lasting one minute. Uh, if we can just please turn on the video right now. Um, yeah, so these are the people, uh, people that are going to compete. They have uh, approximately 50 seconds on the clock. Ready, set, go, don't blink. Don't blink that you're gonna miss it. They're already going. There's, they're, eh, they're already in the mid game. All right, so for, for the convenience sake, until I'm done talking, they're already be finished. But since uh, uh, there is a little bit of, they're gonna finish in another 30 seconds. We don't need to watch the whole game. So if we could just move to the next topic. Chess being way too repetitive. For those that think so, who knows what Shannon's number means? Yeah, I'd honestly be impressed if anybody knew that. Um, Shannon's number is a number developed by a scientist, Shannon, who calculated the approximate, approximately how many possible games of chess exist out there. And the number may shock you. It's actually 10 to the power of 118. That is a 10 with 118 zeros. To make you understand how massive and absurd this number is, there are only 10 to the power of 87 atoms in the whole universe. Chess is way more grand than the entire universe that we possess. I think that's pretty impressive. And that being said, you can still complain that, all right, well, I mean, there are many different games or you can play in many different ways, but the rules are the same and the way you play is the same, so it's going to still be the same thing. So you may get bored of the same rules. For those that think so, you're wrong. There are infinite possible ways of playing chess. By that, I mean there are different what you can call game modes. You can play three check chess, where you win after you give three checks. Anti chess, where your main objective is to lose as fast as possible. You can play atomic chess, where each of your pieces blows up. You can play quantum chess, which is based on quantum physics. You can play horde chess, where you play against a bunch of... Po I can keep on going. I'm, I'm not going to get bored with this. But for the convenience, I'm going to skip every single one of them and just say that, all right, there is a lot of games of chess. So I'm pretty sure that all of your arguments, or my arguments, or our arguments that chess is boring, have been shattered. That being said, I have another question for you. Who knows who this person is? Uh, well, not, not that many people, usually people from the older. Uh, yeah, and definitely not people from my age. Uh, for those that don't know, this is Nona Gapindashvili. She has been five times the world chess champion among women in a row. Now this is an outstanding result. This is one of the, this has very rarely been done. In fact, Georgian women have been world chess champions for 10 years in a row. This is very impressive. Not many countries have such a good result as we have. Yet, chess is not as popular as other sports that, you know, people, that Georgians are good at. The example is rugby or basketball, right? We more value that than chess, which is quite disappointing because we shouldn't forget about chess as well. So, what I, what I want you to do, I'm not telling you that you should sit down and study all of the theories of chess. No, don't make the same mistakes as I did. Paul Morphy, a great chess player, once said that ch playing chess or knowing how to play chess is a sign of gentlemen, but knowing how to play good chess is a sign of a wasted life. Harsh truth. But anyway, what I want to happen is uh, for chess to get, become a little bit more popular, for us to know about our chess history, for schools to encourage amongst other sports like uh, rugby and basketball, we have tons of competition among schools in those sports. Why not make just a couple of competitions in chess? It's not very difficult to set up or anything. 
That being said, chess is a sport has many of its advantages in real life, and there are tons of quotes describing it. Generally saying that chess helps you in real life as well because you become more smarter, you calculate ahead a bit more, uh, you are more wiser in, or you're wiser in real life situations. But I'd like to end this talk on a quote I came up on my own, which really fits today's presentation. Uh, you don't need to be smart to play chess, but you become smart by playing it. Uh, thank you for your attention.